So here's what we're going to get into today. We're going to get into, we got cult leaders, a gay dad, poverty, and dumpster diving. Competitive yard sailing. Competitive yard sailing. No home. No living home. Living in a bus. Living in a bus. Uh, gay dad. Oh, she got into bodybuilding for a little bit, but. She, she as in your gay dad or your mom? <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to say that anymore. But, well, this is Chrissy Chaos. You could kind of say whatever you want. Um, no, but I don't even know what it is anymore because you can't you can't put a hard line in the sand for anyone. But my mom got into bodybuilding, and my dad got into cleaning hotels and becoming a massage therapist. Wow, so that's interesting. Yeah. So your mom kind of became your dad, and your dad became your mom. Yes, in a way, I like that. A, a I, true American tale. That's what we call flipping the script on y'all. And she was the one that got him into the cult. She was the one that wore the pants in the family. So that was always her. Now, when you grew up, growing up in a cult, yeah. is it kind of one of those things where it's like you didn't know? Like, it's like, it must be like being born into, like, ISIS or something. Where you're like, I don't know. This is fine for me. I don't know anything different. I, I'm not, you know, you hear cult and you think negative stereotypes right away. But are there positive things about a cult? Yeah. When I talk to the other, um, you know, comedians that were raised in ISIS— um, yes. Well, they'll say his no. Yeah, you don't know. It's just a dumb thing that your parents do. Every, right. every one of us. If your dad was an alcoholic, if your dad had addiction problems, or he was like really high functioning, worked at the yeah. FBI. It's you. You don't think about. It. There's nothing to compare it to. So it was just like, oh, that's just like the thing that mom and dad do. Also, we're so isolated from people because we're not living in a home. Mm -hmm. I'm. I've never been to school in my life. Right. Uh, Public, nothing, not even homeschool. It's almost as like illegal. You can't do that. It really is illegal. You are definitely not allowed to do it. I'm going to go to the hotel and arrest your father after he cleans <laughs> yeah, my room. Yeah, but, <laughs> and I'm going to go. And when yes. I'm when I'm when I'm doing HEH with your mom, I'm going to get her. I'm going to call the FBI. <laughs> She's got the last stash of a Fedra. Yeah, <laughs> she found out a way to get a Fedra still. Yeah, I love that your mom is the one is Joe Rogan's supplier. She is every time Joe Rogan is like, I know this guy. Uh, he's got <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's fascinating to me because when I hear the word cult, yeah. again, you know, what I immediately think of is, you know, men at, at the top that are really, they're just trying to have sex with women and like, you know, touch little kids peepees and, and it's just mind games, but you did not experience that. Absolutely. Because that's a successful cult. Mm. Like the definition of success doesn't really mean, you know, one, a cult that enriches people's lives or you right. know, gets turned into a religion. It's just one that is, your, basically you get your own Netflix special. It's right. the best thing that could happen to your cult. And you have to have followers for that. You have to have the weird sex stuff. We never had any of that. It right. never went well. For 15 years, they failed every single day. If there's someone that you started at with an open mic and you're like, oh, God, you're still doing that? Right. You're still paying to get on stage? Give it up. Right. It never went well. Every Netflix documentary, they always have an episode two. Where right before the big turn in the story, they're like, things are going great. We're all doing yoga every day. Right. We expanded locations. Right. The Dalai Lama, he was there sucking on all of our kids' tongues. That right. That never happened. Right. It was never going well. It was just extreme poverty. It was people yelling at us on the street because we were yelling at them. Right. So we were street preaching. Right. To get this message across, a mixture of Judaism and Catholicism that my parents helped start. Wait a minute. So the cult is a mix of Judaism and Catholicism. Yeah. So you're circumcised. I am circumcised, yeah. but we didn't believe in hospitals. Whoa. So I had to be circumcised. Urgent cares? Uh, so if you're if you're not in this country, at least in the 90s, if you're not um, – if you don't believe in hospitals like my parents, like they, they didn't believe you should go. I guess they didn't believe that they were building. So what but, happened if you got sick or hurt? What would happen? Uh, ace bandage, yours prayer, or okay. – um, if because they wanted us circumcised for some reason, so we went to a Jewish temple in Ohio, in Ohio at this time. So there's not a lot of Jewish temples there, so it was like the one. There's more coming up now, which we which is nice. yeah, yeah. This, and you've yeah. been a big part of that. You've been absolutely. Really... I've been an advocate for the Jewish temples of Ohio <laughs> Association. <yelling> outside, <laughs> right? Yes. You and I together. This looks like yes. like Ben Shapiro is going to be our guest. Yes. Um, so then the, it was the it was the rabbi's first time doing a, a circumcision. Whoa. He was 33, and he they have like a little bit of wine before they do it, like sure. a ceremonial wine. You got to get a little drunk. 
A little drunk, a little tipsy. You're gonna see a little. Get a little buzz. Hey, listen, you're gonna cut some kid cock. You got a little buzz. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see a little chewed up kid yeah. cock, so you gotta yeah. <laughs> take the edge off. Yes, I get it. <laughs> so, so he starts to do it, and he, and he goes like, "Oi, can't if his hands shaking," and because he, he's saying like, and he's trying to blame it on the wine. He's saying like, "I had yeah. too much wine." Wait, this and is my, you. He's about to cut you. So he's he's halfway cut into. How it. old are you? Uh, 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 less than one. Oh, you're a baby, months, so you don't you months. don't have active memory of this. Of this. Okay, but, I, I but, thought you got circumcised at 13. Yeah, but yeah. for some reason, this story is like told in my family. Okay, I'm like, why are you trying to make me remember this? So we have the drunk rabbi. So who's... the drunk rabbi. So he gets halfway through. He he cuts a little bit, and then he's like, oh, I can't do it. My hands shaking too much because he's too nervous for it. It's his first time. Yeah. So he refuses to finish the circumcision. So then it's not like the Yelp days you can look on your phone. He's got to get she's he's got to refer them to a different temple to finish the job. And they're not everywhere. And everyone else in this situation, like, just go to a hospital and do it because you can you can say you're in an extreme situation. And you need to finish this like the kids going to bleed out. So they drive four and a half hours outside uh, Finley, Ohio, for the next Jewish temple. And they wake this guy up. In the now it's like the middle of the night for for Jews to finish the the rest of the job, uh, and I guess it wasn't bleeding enough, but everything works now. But it was there's so you have a fully circumcised penis now. Well, yeah. Do you ever microwave a hot dog before? Microwave a hot dog? No, have we? No, but we're gonna do, we'll do it. We should do it on the Patreon. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything works. It's fine because you're. It's like little kid skin. Now, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Sounds awful. It's okay to do things to kids because it's little kid skin. Little kid skin. That's the name of this episode, little kid yeah. skin. Um, 